In this video, Hulk smashes, but it's him who's puny this time around. You just may not want to tell Hulk directly to his face, but this video we're going to be having a look at the new release Beast Kingdom Thor Ragnarok Egg Attack Action Hulk, which is part of code EAA054. First thing I suppose we can do is figure out how tall the Hulk stands, grabbing the tape measure right to the top of Hulk's head, stopping the tape measure there, and looking at it in inches, the figure stands 7.8 centimeters. Yes, I can do that. I'd be more than happy to do that. In centimeters, the Hulk stands just short of being 12, 20, 20 centimeters in height. For Hulk's display stand. He gets a slight variation to some of the other egg attack action figures that we've had a look at, at least the smaller sized egg attack action. Here he gets the same shape display stand, however he gets afforded a much clearer looking display base that features Thor Ragnarok along the top and Hulk around the front. What's interesting though about this display neck, let me just peg, I guess I really don't need to unpeg it, but it comes in two pieces like the other display stands. When you are plugging this into place, this swivels back and forth, and then you have this part here that opens and closes. So when you are displaying the figures, you can do it, you can display them a couple of different ways. You bring this down, just kind of have it leveled, and it fits right underneath Hulk's leg. Now, be, being that he's got the skirt in place, you sort of want to also bring this back a little bit as well. And you sort of just have to kind of keep customizing it until you get the proper look and fit that you have. Essentially, he's going to be sitting atop of that like a cradle. The other thing you can do that I've done for displaying, I think Thanos had this as well. Thanos had it where I just swiv swiveled it around. And I think I had it just back like this. And I essentially just had it as a resting point for the figure to lean against. This isn't really the tr traditional correct way of doing it. But just to show you, it serves more as just a resting point for the figure. I mean, you can really display him either or, but I think really you're supposed to have it where this part, uh, there we go, this part here is brought forward, and then he sort of just sits on top of that. Now, I have to say the Hulk's got some pretty cool looking accessories. Um, we'll have a look at those, and then I'll show you how those get incorporated into the figure itself. For starters, he comes with an interchangeable head sculpt. I know what you're asking yourself, where's the hair? There's supposed to be hair on top of this. What's really clever though, is that they've made it so that you can use different faces. Thanos had the exact same thing, with the egg attack action Thanos that we had a look at on this channel. You're simply just pulling the front face off and replacing it with the one that you wanna use. Before we do that though, I wanna show you that it has these little trackballs, joysticks on the back here, where you can adjust Hulk's eyes. So if you wanna have Hulk's eyes, say for example, facing right for forward, you can do that, or you can have them 
I guess you could have them really any which way you want, but you can have them angled this way if you want to have the head tilted away from you know the front view. A couple of different options that you can do with those. Now the neat thing about this is you can take the figure, you can pop the head off. There we go. Don't worry, he will be headless only for a short period of time. Get his legs to stand up right there. You can take the existing hair piece and you just slide this off. There's a little groove right there and this square peg that fits right into that. This normal face sculpt, let me show you the two difference, two of them. This one's screaming, this one's not screaming. And this one also has the joysticks as well. So you can have it any, any which way you possibly want. So if you want to replace it with the angry head sculpt, just line that peg up to that groove and just pop it down. You may, in the process of doing that, I know I have, accidentally hit the, the joysticks. So you can just kind of adjust them still while, the, still while the face is inside the head. And then you can replace it on the shoulders like so. The other thing he comes included with is his, his gladiator helmet, which looks really neat. I love the coloring that they used for it, almost like a dark gunmetal gray. And they've done a transitioning of a darker color here with the lighter red on the inside. Either way though, it does have the same groove lineup. So you can either use the regular, I didn't mean to shock you, scare you there for a second. That fits into place and you can have a regular Hulk face or once again, that groove, you can take the head off the hair piece and you can slot it right inside there. You just have to kind of get it around the sides of his helmet and you can use either helmet or either face with the helmet. So let's say we put it with the body who will be headless no more. There we go. And plug this just into the neck. <laughs> A lot of times you may again accidentally hit the eyes and uh, just cross eye them, but you can just pull the head off and adjust them again accordingly until you get the face and the look that you want. The other accessory, don't worry, don't worry, we're going to get back to the figure in a second. The other accessories he comes included with is his battle axe and his battle hammer. Both of them share similar color patterns with the silver and this kind of darker black here. They've also airbrushed some darker kind of gray areas here uh, onto the blades. They've also done that here on the hammer, just enough just to give it a little bit of a weathering. Both of them fit into his hands. Well, not specifically these hands just yet, but he does. it does fit into the other hands that he comes included with. Speaking of hands, we can talk about those right now. He's got currently closed fists. I'm not a big advocate of closed fists on figures. I always like to use open hands because then I can swap accessories in and out. And here he's got two gripping hands. The other thing he comes included with the other one just over here is uh, just relaxed or I'm going to grab you and mangle you hands. And uh, those would be on their corresponding, you know, proper sides of his arms. One thing about the, uh, the switching of the hands out, let me just show you what's happening here. When you swap out the hands, you're just going to hold onto the forearm and you're going to pop this off pretty easy. Putting on the new hand, just as easy, plopping it back onto the ball joint. And you can do that on both sides. The thing about something as heavy as this hammer, though it is only still plastic, it does have some weight to it. Uh, to the point sometimes where it does make the figure feel as if he's going to lean off and fall over. But one thing with the arm, they they have given him a pretty strong joint uh, in, the, in the forearm. Um, it does, however, require you to angle it just right. It does put a little bit of extra weight on his ankles. I've noticed that the ankles are a little loose on this guy, not necessarily through long-term displaying him, but I did notice that getting him out of packaging, he was a little loose on the, on the ankle portion, that then adding weight via the hammer here is adding some additional stress and uh, he, kind of, he kind of tips a bit when you, when you are displaying him. Mileage may vary, and certainly that's not going to be for every single figure across the board. But I noticed that with the hammer, even if you have it straight forward, 
at least my figure doesn't seem to have the strong enough ankles to support having the hammer hanging out that far. Something, something to be aware of. So let's move the accessories out of the way and let's have a look at Gladiator Hulk. Now, if ever there be a reasoning why egg attack action figures work so well, Hulk would be a good example of that. And really, Thanos was also a good example of that. It's where, really where you, you experience these big, bulkier, larger characters is really where you can see the appeal and the love for these egg attack action. They're sort of simplistic looking figures, as I've done a couple of these already on this channel. But their simplicity, it's kind of really where I adore them. They're kind of cuter versions, if you will, of the super superheroes, in this case you Hulk here, sort of more stylized, a little shorter, obviously a little squatter, and a little bit more off proportions. But again, that for me is the, the appeal of this line. Now, much like he was in Thor Ragnarok, you can see he is adorned here in just rags and clothing and stuff here, very skimped clothing as he is the glider. He's got some armor platings here on his, sh on his arms forearm area and his shoulder pad well this side is pretty vacant what is nice though is he does have the uh, this the almost face paint or body painting there on the side of his body in the bright white it does really a nice job of popping on the backdrop of the otherwise rather dark greens and browns here again i really like the head sculpt I don't know which head sculpt i kind of like more it, it's really just a matter of how i would display the hulk if I'm just having him standing, for example, with his weapons on either side of him, may potentially go with something like this. If I want to go with a little bit more creative, where he's swinging and wanting to smash puny Thor, I probably would end up displaying him with this head sculpt. Um, just get the hand in place there. We spin him around. Again, he's got some really nice details for the simplicity of what this figure lineup is. A lot of browns, a lot of greens, a little bit of whites break up a lot of that. The lower loincloth is softer plastic, as well as this part here is a softer plastic. He does have a shoulder pad that at times does pop off. I'll just deliberately pull it off here so you can see it. There is a ball joint. So even if it does pop off, popping it back in place, you're really just putting the hole on top of the ball joint, applying a little bit of pressure, and the shoulder pad there is as good as new. Nice little bit of uh, weathering that they've added to the shoulder pad area. That little bit of color also helps to go a long way against, again, mostly green and mostly brown. Okay, so let's go through Hulk's posability here. Now, much like the we just recently looked at Deadpool, the variant Deadpool in the gray color scheme, he, Hulk pretty much has the exact same posability, just on a larger scale. For his head, for example, his head is on a ball joint, so it swivels back and forth, hinges up and down, and you can also rock it back and forth. And don't worry, when you are doing any of this, if you are accidentally triggering the this popping right off, you saw how easy it was to plug that back into place. You're just taking the, the, the socket and plugging it on top of the ball joint again. Uh, the arms hinge outward, and not only do they hinge outward, but you can also, let me just show you here, you can pull the arm, not quite out of the socket, but you're pulling this little cup out of the, out of the shoulder area. This retracts out, and just gives you just a little bit extra. It's like, say for example, you want to bring the arm a little bit more forward in. You can do that. Sometimes the ball joint does pop off in the process. And again, a lot of this, you just pop in ball joints back into place. So I like that. I like that this hinges in and out. Anything that really pops off on this guy is simple just to plug back into place. He's sort of like a, a sturdier, blockier figure that you can kind of mess around with here. Uh, the arm rotates all the way around. Uh, he does have a hinge on the elbow. The forearm also swivels, and it swivels right where that hinge happens. And it actually swivels right above the hinge there. Hand also does pretty much the exact same thing. Hinges up and down, and it rotates all the way around. Um, he has an upper torso ball joint. He does have a lower torso ball joint. You just can't see it because it's inside his loincloth. Uh, the feet move forward. The feet move back. The legs, I should say, move out. He has a swivel on the top, essentially where the thigh attaches to the ball joint on the inner cavity of his waist. Swivels right there. He has a knee bend. 
knee lo lower leg swivels just basically where that knee attaches and then he's also got a hinge an ankle rocker and he's also got toe articulation the only thing I wish this figure didn't have was uh, like a lower, like the lower area here. Not so much the arm. The arms aren't so much a problem at all, but I noticed like the knees are a little loose, just on mine, but they are a little loose and as well as the ankles. So again, when it comes to him standing, standing him on his own isn't so much the problem. It's then when you add weapons, for example, that I find he gets a little loose. Only on mine, but it's just something I want to mention. By the way, FYI, Beast Kingdom is also planning or have already released a Thor Ragnarok 4 in the Egg Attack action lineup as well. So if you've picked up or planning to pick up Gladiator Hulk and feel he needs an opponent, a combatant to fight against and smash, you can also pick up the Thor that's also from the same Egg Attack action lineup as well. I really like Thor. I really like the Hulk here a lot. He's bigger and bulkier than, say, some of the smaller egg attack or normal egg attack action figures that we've looked at. One just recently, the variant of the X-Force Deadpool. But I think making them bigger and bulkier, you also get to see some of the extra tricks of the trade that Beast Kingdom can put into their releases, like swappable faces and also the trackball eye system, which at times can make Hulk look a little cross-eyed may require you to take the face off from time to time and just sort of adjust that, unless you want a cross-eyed Hulk. That's entirely up to you. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find it now at your local comic book store. And if you can't find a local comic book store in your area, fear not. You can go to www.comicshoplocator.com, put in your necessities, your postal code or zip code, and you should be able to find a comic book store in your area. Today we were having a look at the Beast Kingdom Thor Ragnarok. This was Egg Attack Action Gladiator Hulk, which was product code EAA-054. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Egg Attack Action figures, or really just any of the Beast Kingdom releases that I've covered on this channel, there's a playlist just for that. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, because a lot more of Beast Kingdom reviews will be coming soon. So stay tuned for those. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.